This quiet dork is secretly a goaded getaway driver, but when things go wrong and the bad guys want to clap his girl, he has to fight for his life. So this red car arrives in front of a bank, and we now see the faces of guys in the car one by one. All of the passengers look like thieves. The lady looks like she can steal my heart, so that counts too. But the driver just looks like a baby, and you won't believe this, but his name is Baby. Baby starts playing music on his iPod, and the rest of the guys get out of the car. They take their stuff from the trunk and head into the bank. While they're in the bank, Baby's having the performance of a lifetime in the car, but when a cop car flies by, him. He's brought back to reality. He looks in the bank and can see his guys rounding off, so he knows it's about to be showtime. He's now getting himself ready as his guns run out of the bank and into the car. He does a quick reverse then a sharp turn and he's on his way. However, the police are on his tail, but he's doing a pretty good job at losing them. He now has about five police cars chasing him. It's like Vice City up in here, but Baby is playing it really cool just swerving out of every danger. Then it gets to a point where he gets in the middle of two other red cars on the highway. A police chopper has eyes on him, but he goes under the bridge and quickly switches lanes with the car on the left. Of course, the chopper didn't catch that, so they still think he's the one in the middle. That's how they manage to escape. They dump the red car in a parking lot, quickly change clothes and cars, and the lady drives them off. Now we see Baby really enjoying his walk with his earphones on. This is how you walk when you've just had a big payout. But then again, I don't have a job, so how can I relate? He goes into a coffee shop, orders four coffees, and heads back to where the rest of the guys are just as the money is being shared. Doc is sharing the money while Griff asks if Baby is retarded. Rude. Doc says, the R word means slow. Was he slow? I mean, that needs no reply. Doc says he's a good kid, but a devil behind the wheel. Griff doesn't let it rest, though. He's still on Baby's ass. That sounds wrong. Now the guys leave. Doc and Baby head to Doc's car. Doc takes just a wad of notes out of all the bands there and hands it to Baby. He says just one more job and Baby is done. You'll understand better soon. Now Baby's home. He takes the wad of cash and puts it in an underground compartment in the living room where there are more wads of cash. His foster father Joe, whose death, is sitting there watching. And Baby asks him if he's hungry. He says, always. Me too, Joe. Me too. Baby now goes to make him breakfast. And just then, Joe sees his son on the news as a robbery suspect. So when Baby brings the food, he asks him where he got the money from. Baby just says it's from work and he promises he'll do just one more job and he's done. Joe tells Baby he doesn't belong in that world. I know, right? Later at night, Baby is bored so he decides to make music from a conversation he recorded earlier. He uses the part where Doc said, the R word means slow. Was he slow? He does a pretty good job and he's proud of himself. So he sits back, listens to what he has done, then puts the tape in a bag where there are hundreds of other similar tapes. At least he knows what his next career is. He picks one of the tapes titled Mom and it takes him back to the car crash which took the lives of both his parents. He decides against picking up the tape. He instead picks up his old iPod, looks at it for a bit, then picks up his phone and heads out. He's now sitting in a restaurant, Bo's Diner, when this lady who works there, Deborah, comes in singing a song with the lyrics, B-A-B-Y Baby. He quickly records that part as he stares at her. He stares so much that he doesn't even notice her walking back towards him. She comes and asks him what he wants. She's really friendly. Too friendly. You might think she's flirting with you if you're not careful. While they're talking, the burner vibrates. She asks him what he does and he says he's a driver. She then says she's somehow jealous, that sometimes all she wants to do is head west on 20 in a car she can't afford with a plan she doesn't have. Just her, her music, and the road. Baby says he'd like that too. The cook now clears his throat loudly to break that off. Baby tells her she's so beautiful just before she leaves. This is love at first sight. Cannot relate. She's humming that same song as she's leaving. Baby asks her what that song is. Next thing we see, he's buying the record, then dancing to it at the house in front of his dad. Joe has not even seen the girl, but seeing how she makes Baby feel, he says he approves of her. But Doc breaks up the fun. There's a new job. Baby meets Doc at the new location, and he's introduced to the new crew. That's Eddie Nonos, JD, and then Bats. The guys are asking why Baby is always listening to music, and Doc tells them he has tinnitus from an accident he had when he was a kid. That means his ears always ringing. Bats then goes over to Doc and asks him about Baby. Doc tells him Baby has been driving since he could see over the dashboard. He tells him some of the amazing stuff the boy has done, including stealing his own Mercedes. Now that's why Baby owes Doc. The next day, we see the crew in the car. They arrive at the target location, and somewhere by the corner, a man has his eyes on them. You can tell he's a little suspicious. Anyway, JD tosses the mask to Bats and Eddie while Baby starts his song. They go do their thing and get back in the truck. Easy peasy. But just as Baby starts driving off, that man who was suspicious tries to stop them. He runs his car into theirs and even shoots at them. He's probably ex-military because these revolvers and glocks he's bringing out are some heavy stuff. But what he doesn't know is that this is Baby he's dealing with. Of course he gets away. It's not easy, but it's Baby. They're on the highway now and they find out that the military guy is still on their tail. Bats tries to shoot him, but Baby stops him by swerving off. The guy tries to do what Baby just did, but he quickly finds out that he doesn't have the sauce like Baby. He crashes so bad. Baby keeps driving and they get in traffic. So they all come down and go to steal the car at the front of the traffic. Bats doesn't care that the woman has a baby in there. He still commandeers the car. The light now turns green and they drive off. While they're in the car, JD mentions that he left his shotgun behind. Costly mistake. They get to a parking lot, switch cars, and split up. In no time, they arrive at the rendezvous location, and Baby goes to get the coffee. He's not as jovial as the last time. He comes back to find out that JD has been made to go missing permanently. Next up, Baby and Doc take the bags to the car. Doc gives him a wad of cash and tells him he's all paid up now, but he has one last job to do, and that is to sunset the ride where JD's body is in. We quickly cut to the ride being squeezed and crushed, and all that is taking Baby back to his younger days. When he saw his mom performing, when she got him his first iPod, when he saw her being beaten up by his dad, and then the accident 
and brings him back to the president. Also, he just plays a song in his iPod, dumps his gloves, the burner, and leaves. He heads back to Bo's diner, and who's the first person he sees? Deborah. Deborah's colleague tells her she thinks baby's mom used to work here. Deborah goes by his table, drops the coffee, and starts a conversation with him. They talk about music, basically, and boy, can Debbie sing. She takes his recorder and sings into it. There's real chemistry between these two. Deborah just straight up asks her if his mom used to work here, and he says sometimes, but she was also a singer. She then asks what she does now, and he just says nothing. They say a few more irrelevant things, and then they leave. Off to the laundromat. She likes the song he played for her, and they get talking. He tells her about his tinnitus, and how he got it from an accident which took his parents' lives. She has a sad story, too. Her mom is also late, and she looked after her for a while before she died. Anyway, they set up a proper date, and now we see Baby at home super happy. He tells Joe a little about Deborah. Then he drops the wand of cash from Doc and tells Joe he's done for real now. Joe now tells him to go get a job as a pizza delivery guy, because wouldn't it be great to bring joy to people when he drives? Baby agrees and goes to get the job. The first customer he delivers to is surprised at how fast the pizza came. Well, let me introduce you to the baby driver. He goes home, counts his money, and Joe makes a reference to Deborah not putting her life in danger. Next thing we see is Baby and Debbie on a date. You can tell they're having a good time until the waiter comes and tells them someone already took care of the bill. Who did? Doc. So Baby goes to Doc, and you guessed it. He wants him for another job. Baby first says no, but Doc tells him he'd break his legs and kill everyone he loves if he refuses. No chill. So Baby has no other option, but that changes his entire mood, and Deborah notices on the drive back home. She tries to get him to talk, but he can't really tell her what's going on, can he? But if the lips can't talk, there's surely one other thing they can always do. Aha! Anyway, they make plans for tomorrow. Next day, Doc comes to pick him up and they drive to the post office. The job is happening tomorrow, but he needs Baby to go in there today to get information about the place. The number of customers, employees, security cameras, if the security guard is armed, you know, all that stuff. Doc tells him to go in with his nephew, Sam, because it's less suspicious, but the little boy is important for more than just erasing suspicion. While Baby is still struggling with taking note of everything, Sam gives him all the information that's required. So Baby just gets some stamps and goes. They head back to the car and he relays the information to Doc, after which he takes Baby back home. Baby heads upstairs and calls Deborah. He has to see Doc tonight, so their plans are canceled. She says she thought he stopped driving, and he said he thought he did too. This is not what he wants. She then asks him what he wants, and he says, I want to head west on 20 in a car we can't afford, with a plan we don't have. Keep driving and never stop. He asks her if she's in. She says she is. So he says, see you soon, and hangs up. He shows up for the job, and the new crew's a mix of the old ones. Bats, and then Buddy and Darling. It seems those two are part of one package. They do some small talk, and then Buddy heads over to Baby, and they're bonding over, yes, you guessed it, music and fast cars. They're listening to a song together, and somehow that seems to annoy Bats, who thinks you don't need music to drive. Just drive. Anyway, Doc comes and breaks up the conversation as he begins to read out the plans to hit the post office as well as the tools they'll be needing. Tonight they pick up their guns, and after that, they'll all be spending the night here. And they're off. Bats asks Baby to pull over because he wants to be. He does. Bats gets off and the lovebirds are at it again. As they're hanging out, Darling tells Buddy she wants him to clap Bats after the job because he looked at her funny. Oh wow. Anyway, Bats comes back and they leave. They head straight to the pickup location. This little man dressed in all white removes a cloth and viola. All sorts of firearms, grenades too. If you thought this was going to be a simple purchase, think again, because things very soon light up. Bats takes the first shot and it soon turns into a full-blown shootout. Baby very he nearly gets clapped, but Bats comes and saves him. They finish off the other guys, but Darling gets a bullet to the hand. Darling and Buddy are yelling at Bats now, but he explains that he starts shooting because he noticed APD written on one of the boxes and clocked that the guys were cops. While they're still yelling at each other, one of the guys stands up and tries to drive off, but Bats, Buddy, and Darling stop him in his tracks. They head off in a different car from the one they came in. Bats throws a grenade in the car that guy just tried to escape in, and they hit the highway. As Baby is driving, Bats tells him to stop at Bo's diner because he's hungry. Baby says no. Bats can't fathom being told no, so he yells and Baby stops the car. Baby says he doesn't want to go in there and we all know why, but he can't tell Bats the real reason, so he says it's because the place sucks. But Bats knows it's more than that, so he insists they all go in. Deborah is on duty. Baby has a straight face and Deborah already knows something's off. The mean looking men behind him don't help matters at all. They get a seat and Deborah comes to get their orders. Deborah and Baby exchange looks and she leaves. Bats seems to have Buddy all figured out. He tells him he can tell he used to be a stockbroker and then got caught crazy in debt, which drove him into the world of crime. It seems he's right because see that look on Buddy's face? Darling calms Buddy down and tells Bats that he thinks he knows them, but he actually doesn't. He tells him he doesn't want to see Buddy mad. She says, when he sees red, you won't see nothing but black. Kind of a banger line. Bats just claps sarcastically in response to that. Just then, Deborah comes with the drinks, and as she leaves, Bats asks Baby if he knows her. He denies her like Peter did Jesus, and Bats takes out his gun to go clap her. Baby holds it. Bats says okay, tells him to tip the nice lady, then leaves. Buddy and Darling follow. I thought this guy said he was hungry. Baby goes to tip Deborah and he slides in a napkin. She opens it and it says road trip 2 a.m. Oh, he plans to ditch Doc now? This won't end well. Anyway, the crew heads back to base, and the first thing Doc says is that he didn't hear the word bananas. Normally when a deal is done with his clients, they call him, say the word bananas, and hang up. But he didn't hear bananas tonight. So he's going bananas. Bazinga. Bats says his clients were cops. Doc says he knows. They were his cops. So Bats lies that they fired first, and Buddy covers up for him. But that's not enough for Doc. He calls off the job and tells them to get out of town. But Bats says he's not running. He says they should drive into the storm. Doc then asks who's going to fence the money order since he shot the fence. Bats says Buddy
Buddy has a guy. Buddy says yes he does, but Doc wants to hear from Baby. He says it's his call. Baby's vote is yes. He walks off. Buddy looks at him suspiciously. Baby is now replaying the just concluded conversation on his recorder. Then he starts picturing himself with Deborah. He snaps back to reality at about a minute to 2 a.m. and now he tries to sneak out, but not so fast of course. He finds Buddy standing waiting for him, but he asks him where he's going. Baby says coffee. Not a smart answer. Buddy is now telling Baby that if he's just in this for the buzz, if driving is just an escape for him, then he better leave and not come back. Sounds like a brilliant suggestion. Thanks boss. But here comes Bats to ruin everything. He's with Baby's little recorder and he's asking him why he was recording them. He has a revolver pointed to his face now. And he's asking him if he's a cop. Baby, who has already seen how Bats treats cops, is shaking now. He explains that he only records stuff because he likes to make music out of them. They ask him to play one of his recordings then, but he tells them they're all at home. So they knock him out cold and go get all of his recordings. By the time he wakes up, he's in front of the entire crew and his tapes are thrown out on the table. Doc is asking Baby to explain, but the only thing on his mind is Joe. He asks what they did to him and Bats just comes out on Joe's wheelchair. That's not a good sign. Now he puts in a tape and it's the, was he slow one? Darling likes it. Doc then picks out the one named Deborah, and Darling figures that's the girl from the diner. Bats now asks why he said he didn't know her, and Buddy asks if he has been talking about them to Deborah. Trouble. Doc is fed up. He says, take this fool back to his shithole. I'll find another driver for tomorrow. And Baby gets up and says, no, you're not getting a new driver. I've been on every job since we met. I'm your driver tomorrow. I'm driving. Doc loves the energy, so Baby's back on the job. Meanwhile, Deborah is sitting at the diner waiting endlessly. Poor girl. The next day, the crew hit the road. It's a little cloudy. They get to the post office, and Buddy and Darling drop off at the entrance, while Baby and Bats go round back where Bats drops off. While he's waiting in the car, Baby sees a woman approaching the post office. She waves at him and he shakes his head at her. She turns and returns with a police officer. While he's at the door of the car, the guys come out and Bats claps the cop. Then they get in the car, but Baby doesn't move. Bats is yelling at him to drive, but he's just staring. Bats says he'll shoot him if he doesn't move in three. So Baby just puts his foot on the gas and runs into the truck ahead of them, which had a rod poking out. The rod runs straight into Bats' chest and that's good night. Baby, Buddy, and Darling quickly get out and before they know it, cops are everywhere. Buddy and Darling shoot for a bit before they join Baby and run. The cops are chasing. Apparently Baby is not just fast behind the wheels. He's also really fast on his feet. Look how much ground he's covering. He runs into a mall, gets a change of clothes, and tries to walk off like normal. But that doesn't do him much good as the cops still spot him and continue chasing. He's running like he stole something. Oh wait, he did steal something. Or at least he helped other people steal something. He gets out to the parking lot and manages to break into a car. Okay, this is where you have really lost him. You should have never let him get in a vehicle. But wait a minute. This is not exactly superhero mode as Baby crashes into a truck before he even gets out of the parking lot. Guess who's in the truck? Darling and Buddy. They get out of the truck and try to get into Baby's car. But the cops are already well positioned for a shoot out. They clap Darling. And that brings out the beast and Buddy. He's shooting at everyone now, including Baby. Baby tries to drive off, but that doesn't work. So he takes the bag of money, which Darling dropped in the car and runs off. He tries to pick his iPod, but Buddy shoots the poor thing. Baby now stops an old lady and takes her car, but he doesn't just drive off. Now that his iPod is gone, he has to find the right song on the radio before he can drive. That takes a few seconds, but he does find it. He turns, tosses her back to her, and drives home. He gets home and finds Joe on the floor. The entire house is scattered. He grabs his wads of cash, stuffs them in Joe's jacket, then puts a call through to Bo's diner. The cook picks up, so he just tells him to tell her that Baby's coming. He hangs up, picks his iPod, he has a lot of these obviously, and carries Joe down to the car. He uses another car though, not the one he came in. He drives Joe to an old people's home, records a message telling the listener all about Joe. Joe asks Baby if he'll come back, and he says he doesn't know. Again, Joe tells him to take care of Deborah, and just then, a chopper from the Atlanta Police Department shows up with its very bright lights, but Baby disappears right in time. We now see him arriving at Bo's diner. Baby's here for his baby, but Buddy is here for him. Just then, the faces of Darling and Bats are shown on the TV as the robbers were confirmed dead. Buddy says a few things about Darling, and then picks up his pistol and points it at Deborah. He asks Baby if he loves her, and he says yes, but he says that's too bad. A cop car arrives outside, but the cops just want to use the bathroom. Buddy motions the baby to come sit beside him. He takes one of his buds and vibes to the song Baby is listening to, but only for a few moments. He takes off the earphones and tells Baby the song is over, but he'll still have to face the music. Okay, that's a good line. After he says that, Deborah's colleague comes out and asks how they're doing. As Buddy turns to reply, Baby shoots him in the chest. Pandemonium everywhere. Baby grabs Deborah and escapes through the back door. While the cop in the car runs into the restaurant, Baby tells Deborah he has to go, but Deborah says she's coming with him. So they disappear together. Meanwhile, Buddy is not going down alone. He takes the cop with him. Baby goes to a payphone, calls Doc, and tells him he needs his help. But Doc just hangs up. Deborah says they need to leave, but Baby says he just needs one thing first. Then it would be just them, music, and the road. She says they don't even have a car. And just as she says that, a sweet red Mustang pulls up. Baby goes and commandeers the car. He and Deborah get in and they drive off. They get to a parking lot and stop. Deborah has her heart in her mouth. Baby goes up to meet Doc. He tells him he needs those tapes. Doc says he isn't giving them to him. Baby says he has the money orders in the bag he's holding, and he'll trade the bag for just one of the tapes. Doc still says no. When he sees Deborah come in, that seems to change his mind. He allows Baby to get the tapes. Doc is a romantic, I see. He even follows them to the elevator and tells them to skip down. He gives them a bag of money and says that should be enough. Why is he being so kind, you ask? Because he was in love once. As the elevator door opens, they see three men shooting at them. Doc tells them to run while he takes care of them. Doc gets shot, though. So Baby and Deborah stop to see if he's okay. He turns to them and says, I thought I told you to run. A cop car now arrives and Doc tells them to leave. He'll deal with the cops. But that's not the cops. It's Buddy. This guy is really surviving.
described everything. Now remember that song Buddy and Baby bonded over that other time? Buddy plays it from the car and puts it at the highest volume. He tells Baby it's his killer track. Doc starts shooting at him, but Buddy easily runs him over. He slams into another car, then reverses and completely crushes Doc's body. Baby quickly uses that opportunity to pick a car key from the floor. He then takes the gun from his pocket and points it at Buddy, who's revving his car. He shoots, but doesn't really get Buddy, so he jumps on the car and then over it as Buddy slams into the wall. Baby and Deborah now get into a car and both cars are now doing a head-to-head -head race. Baby is reversing while Buddy is going forward facing him. Baby manages to get Buddy to slam into another car. Then he takes off his seatbelt and tells Deborah, we're getting out. We have to end this. By the time Buddy has gotten himself back, Baby and Deborah have left the car. He sees the car, but he doesn't see them. He's driving around calling out for Baby. Then he sees Deborah standing alone and she just says, now. Out of nowhere, Baby shows up in a truck and drives into Buddy's car, pushing it over the railing. But Buddy gets out just in time. Still doesn't die. Baby comes out of the car and looks at the cop car burning downstairs. Then from nowhere, Buddy comes out and tells him he did good, but he took away something that he loves, so he has to do the same. Of course, you know what that means. But before taking Deborah, Buddy decides to take out Baby's hearing first. He shoots so close to Baby's ears, and Baby is holding his ears and writhing in pain on the floor. But before Buddy goes to attend to Deborah, she grabs a rod from the car and starts hitting him with it. That's enough distraction for Baby to pick a revolver and clap Buddy with it. He shoots at him, and Buddy finally dies. He falls and lands right on the burning car, and the thing just explodes. Next thing we see, it's morning, and Deborah is driving with Baby in the front seat. He's only just waking up. Debbie is playing with his mom's tape, and it seems like it's going to be happily ever after. But they get to a bridge, which is blocked by cops. Deborah tries to do a quick reverse, but Baby hits the brakes. He tells her she doesn't belong in this world, takes out the key, and goes out with his hands in the air. The cops come and take him in. Next, we see him being transported to jail, and we hear Deborah talking about him in court. After her, we see the old lady whose car he stole but return her purse. Then the other lady who he signaled not to go in. Then finally, Joe. My law knowledge is not so good, but I think they're all acting as character witnesses. Anyway, the judge sentences him to 25 years in prison, subject to parole hearing after five years served. So I guess it's not that bad. We see Baby receiving a letter from Deborah in prison. It's pictures and some really sweet words. She says she can't wait for the day when it's just the two of them, music and the road. Fast forward a bit, and it seems his dream is finally coming true. Moral of the story? Love at first sight is the least believable part of this